Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Peter. If you're new here, I mainly specialize in nature photography and I absolutely love macros. In today's video, I'm going to review the Laowa 25mm 2.5 to 5x ultra macro lens, which I purchased back in October last year. So I've been using it just for over a year now. I have spent at least several hundred hours in the field using this particular lens. So let's jump straight into the review. I want to talk about the negatives first in this long-term review. The first negative would be the lack of aperture coupling, which means that you can't control the aperture in camera via the dials. It's not electronically connected. This usually results in a very dark viewfinder, which means that without an assist light, it's going to be very difficult for you to nail the focus to find the subject in the viewfinder, especially when there isn't much ambient light available. Without the aperture coupling, once you step down to, let's say, f8 or f11, that's the amount of light that you will be seeing through the viewfinder, which isn't much. So I recommend you use either a ring light, which I don't prefer, because for example, with the Laowa ring light that you can attach to this front element right here, you can just twist it. It creates an unpleasing reflection, especially with iridescent or highly reflective beetles, for example. You can also see the reflection of the ring light when, for example, you take shots of jumping spiders in those big, beautiful beady eyes. So I can't really recommend using uh, that particular ring light too much in the field. The other negative uh, would be, oh my God, shut up. Rainbow orchid. The other negative would be the lack of image stabilization, which would come really handy if you wanted to use a lower shutter speed, let's say in the range of 1 30th to 1 50th of a second. Also image stabilization helps quite a bit when you are shooting macro videos. And I can't really recommend uh, this particular lens for shooting macro videos, unless you have plenty of light available and you use a tripod. It started to rain a little bit, but I'm still gonna continue with this review. Hopefully it's not gonna get much worse. The other negative would be the lack of autofocus, especially beyond the one-to-one -one magnification ratio. Almost nobody would be using an autofocus system because it is not accurate enough. It is still a little bit of a negative. For example, with the Canon 100mm macro lens, it has exceptional autofocus system. I used to use the AI autofocus mode, which is a hybrid autofocus system. It uses the continuous AI servo mode in conjunction with the one-shot autofocus, which is only acquired once the subject stops moving. So for example, if you use the lens and you move back and forth, it detects it or registers it as a movement and it keeps using the AI servo mode. But once you stop moving and you find the subject, then it switches to the very accurate one-shot autofocus. Autofocus usually works only up to one-to-one -to -one life size magnification. Also, autofocus would come very handy for video work. For example, when you are trying to track a moving subject. It is a little bit of a negative, but not a big deal, as most of these niche lenses don't have an autofocus. The other negative would be the degradation in image quality past the 4x magnification ratio. Up to that magnification ratio, the images are quite sharp from corner to corner. Past that, diffraction kicks in to the point where it becomes really mushy and quite soft. So especially in the field, I wouldn't recommend using it past 3x magnification. I've been mostly using it at the default setting of 2.5x magnification anyway, especially on an APS-C sensor that I've been using the Canon ATD. It gives you an apparent magnification of 4x due to the 1.6 crop factor. The optical uh, magnification remains obviously at 2.5x, but due to the change in the field of view, narrower viewing angle, it gives you a slightly larger magnification. Overall, it has a very steep learning curve. It's quite difficult to use it in the field due to significant amount of light loss and the lack of aperture coupling. Most of the time, the effective aperture that you would be using would be in the range of f40. I want to give you an example of effective aperture. Most of the time, you would be using f f8 or f11 in the field with this particular lens at the default setting of two and a half or 3x. Let's go with 3x for the sake of an easy calculation. At a 3x magnification and at an aperture of f11, you have to add the magnification plus one. So that would be four times f11. So the effective aperture would be f44, which is a very narrow aperture. The last negative would be the minimum focusing distance. You have to get quite close to your subject. At the lowest 2.5x magnification ratio, the minimum focusing distance is around 23 centimeters, and that is reduced to around 17 centimeters at 5x. So you have to get very, very close, and it can be quite difficult not to scare very skittish insects away, for example. So 
that can be a big negative as well or a source of frustration. These are the negatives. Let's talk about some positives now and start with the build quality. This Lava Ultra Macro Lens has amazing build quality. The construction is mainly metal. It's quite sturdy. Another huge advantage is that it's quite portable. As you can see, it's very small, very compact and quite lightweight. The total weight comes in at 400 grams. When it's fully extended, it is only 137 millimeters long, so about 14 centimeters. And at the two and a half X magnification, it is only around 80 millimeters, 8 centimeters. If you compare it to the MP65, the Canon 125X ultra macro lens, that one is a behemoth, almost twice the size of this. Portability, huge bonus. You can also get into much more confined spaces. For example, if you try to get close to an insect that is sitting on a leaf, the risk of bumping into a leaf is significantly lower than with a big bulky lens. Having a small lens bar also helps you get down really low, get those really beautiful engaging low angle shots for example when you are facing insects having a small lens bar also comes with another advantage it makes your life much easier when you're trying to find a small subject through the viewfinder for example with the canon 100 millimeter macro lens i sometimes find myself struggling trying to find that little insect another positive would be great overall image quality the sharpness from corner to corner is amazing especially up to 4x magnification past that point due to diffraction it becomes a little bit softer there's negligible amount of chromatic aberration or color fringing due to the inclusion of an extra low dispersion element which also helps with the sharpness this lens really does shine when you start stacking those images you can get exceptionally sharp shots for deep stacks i've been using my manual macro rail from newer you should check out that review I've got a couple of videos of those, both setting it up and a brief review of that particular product. It is a very cheap uh, macro rail and I absolutely love it. In the field, I haven't been doing many deep stacks, mainly due to the fact that my flash doesn't recycle quick enough. I will have to invest into an external battery pack, which will definitely help. The other positive would be obviously due to the magnification ratio that it provides that you can photograph very small subjects, very small insects. Even with insects that are smaller than half a centimeter, you can still completely fill the frame with them. The last positive is definitely one of the most important, the price. It is significantly cheaper than, for example, its uh, competitor, the MP65 from Canon. I checked the price from different retailers on Amazon and usually can buy them uh, between six and seven hundred dollars. From Venus Optics, uh, from the manufacturer directly, you can order it for 399 US dollars, which is around 550, 600 Australian dollars. But then you have to take into consideration the postage. I recommend you buy this lens at a discount, especially during uh, Black Friday or Cyber Monday. Last year when I bought it, I only had to dish out 600 Australian dollars, so just a little over 400 US. One last thing that I want to cover, who would I recommend this lens to? If you are a novice, an absolute beginner in macro photography, I can't suggest you go and buy this lens straight away. I think you should start with something that is much easier to use, such as the Canon 100mm macro lens or third-party lenses from Sigma or Tamron, for example. Overall, this is an amazing lens, despite its shortcomings. I absolutely love it. I think I should wrap this up now. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you find some pieces of information useful. If you did, them please hit that like button consider subscribing if you're new here thank you so much guys for your support and see you guys very soon in the next one